series where we've been creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. We're back on CodeBuddies.org. I took a hiatus from streaming on CodeBuddies uh, to test out live streaming on Twitch and then mirroring the videos on YouTube. I just learned that uh, I can link the CodeBuddies Hangouts to Twitch streams uh, instead of using sort of the Jitsi uh, or Google Hangouts. Uh, the Jitsi was a little bit problematic, it kept disconnecting, and had uh, audio and latency issues. Unfortunately, uh, I do like the Jitsi project and hope that, um, well, I hope it, maybe the latency reduces. Uh, I've tried to use it in other contexts as well, um, and it's had a little bit of cross-platform issues. So I think it's really important that we have these neutral um, platforms that we can meet with audio and visu visual chat and communication, uh, aside from Skype and things like that. Anyway, I'm a little bit off topic. Uh, but we're back streaming on Code Buddies. It is a community of people who are co-learning, uh, hanging out, doing code in real time, teaching and learning from one another. There's a lot of different topics. Everything on Python, JavaScript, Java, you name it, whatever you're wanting to learn. Uh, it's got a very active community through many channels. Today we're continuing this Western Friend website. Our source code is available on GitHub. We're going to work on a couple of issues that are remaining, specifically from doing um, this e-commerce component. Uh, I don't have, I don't think I have dummy content here. I just reinstalled my operating system and cleaned up uh, a number of things that way. So I have to flesh out some initial con tent here so you'll see an error message oh actually take that back i did a demo here with uh, mary i remember now so we've set up the initial bookstore but what we have is a, a cart uh, and most recently i've been working on calculating shipping sort of flat rate shipping so i'll do a little bit of code cleanup there and then work on the ui texts nothing too in depth here so it's going to be a more relaxed session but before we get started let's have some tea some green tea uh, with hints of sort of fruit and flowers. It's called Tropical Paradise. Okay, I do need to mute the mic just for one moment uh, while I check the written text that Mary would like to see in the user interface. Sorry about uh, not having this open in advance. I'll be just one moment. Okay, cool. What I'm looking for in a different tab is an email from Mary Klein, where she sent me, should be a starred message, sent me some additions uh, and modifications to the text. So flagged. Wording for order and payment pages. Docx file should be should be able to open it with LibreOffice, uh, but I don't seem to have it installed. Yeah, I do. LibreOffice six point So I'll add really quick, just so you can see on the stream. Uh, I'll view for this LibreOffice 
writer document. And then I'll move it off stream. So essentially what we want to do is um, yeah, this is where we're deploying our test site. So if anyone's interested in checking it out, uh, that's cool. And I'm not sure I'm going to stick with Heroku. I think they're way overpriced for w what they offer. I'd like to see a, uh, a mid-range uh, price option between their free tier and their pro tier, so to speak. Okay, so we got, let's see. So if I go to the create order screen here, uh, well, let me just show you. Mary wants us to put in uh, these labels and uh, help both the help text and the form text. I'll try to get those in. And a little bit of a notice to tell people we're not storing their data because we're using Braintree to process the cards and the, um, there's no uh, credit card data that actually gets stored on our server. So we just want to give people that assurance. So that said, we'll close out. I'll hide that. And we can take a look now. checkout process. So I've got this open in, uh, in the document open in a different page or different desktop. Okay, so here before this 1797, Mary would like to see the line total. Uh, I just realized, let me start a branch. It's asking me my password. I haven't uh, entered the password this session, so one moment. Create a new branch from master. General message there. I think I'm able to get a, a few tasks under the same pull request. So we're on the create order page. So we'll be in the orders module, templates, create order for item. So essentially, we're iterating all over each item in the uh, cart and displaying the quantity and product title, and then. Price. So she would like us to put line total. Hmm. And with a little bit of a space, I believe. At this point, I'm starting to think this should be a table, to be honest. So let me see here. Because, the, I mean, this is just hard to read, and we don't want to just jam more text here. Uh, okay, so that said, for a card. Let's see what it looks like. Item 
quantity. Product title. Why does it keep asking that? This is not funny. One moment. We're having this problem before. It's like it doesn't keep my SSH key active. So a span here, we're TD, TD. I need to get some of these um, plugins back enabled. There's one that edits the closing and opening tags together just by changing one. All right, let's see if this works. Quantity, product, line total. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's just get some bootstrap um, classes on here. Make it a little bit cleaner. I had thought about doing this table a while ago, and now that Mary has pointed out uh, that she'd like some additions to this area, it's a good time to do it. All right, so we do have a table, class, table, the header should be there, it's fine. Hopefully that'll give it a little bit of a spacing just by adding this one class, let's take a look. Yeah, much better, very good. I think this is an improvement. It's not literally what Mary asked for, putting the text in the same line, but it, it, it is the spirit of what she asked for to get these. And it's a lot cleaner, easier to read. Uh, I could probably do a compact table. See what this looks like. That's a nice effect. I don't know if it's really useful. Maybe. Nah, it's not really useful, I think. Let's see where it goes again. Ah, oh, man. KSSHS okay, pass keeps asking for the password. I think this is the last time I got around this by not using SSH when I cloned the repo, just using HTTPS. I don't want to mess with that right now. Because I think it's trying to synchronize the repo every so often, and firstly, that's just too much. I don't need to do that except if I want to push or pull.
I had disabled the key ring before, but then I had to enter the password repeatedly. VS Code keeps asking for get credentials. Auto fetch feature while get server doesn't have any information authorized identity. Happens when you get repo as HTTPS remote URL. I guess this kind of. Oh, I might be able to have it cache my password for 15 minutes. Is better because oftentimes stream for more than an hour. Here's the uh, Stack Overflow question, by the way. Visual Studio Code keeps asking for Git credentials, so it's not really a KDE thing necessarily. All I'm using the KDE desktop. It's no longer KDE desktop environment. Something anyway. <laughs> it's a whole other thing. It's a community and such and such. But this is a VS Code specific thing. This might be good, uh, and frankly, I don't need a Tato fetch. I hope this is going to come back and bite me. there. Cool. All right, this is one good answer. Adding my upvote in another tab or my other screen. All right, back to what we were doing. Table small. I think this is a good one because we don't want it to take up super big amount of space. Table hover, I'm taking the table hover off. I thought I'd already done that. Table small, let's see how this looks. Yeah, it's a little cleaner. I don't know if I need this dark theme. It's really visually prominent, where I think this is actually a little bit better. Subdued. Subdued, dude. All right, good stuff. I think this is something I'll have to talk with Mary about. She's got red asterisks inside of this. I think she wants to either, maybe she just means to add some text here in, in the actual field. <clears throat> or does she want this, the requirement, the asterisk to be more pronounced? Some of this I don't really have a lot of control over. I'd love to talk about the nuances. For example, allowing 
organizations to order things, so they might not have a family name. This shouldn't be required, hence the blue underline and lack of asterisk. But this red one, the given name, every organization in person has at least a given name. So we'll leave that. Now this has help text underneath the field, but you can also put some kind of a, uh, what's the word? Oh, placeholder text. They can see race as soon as you click. Purchaser's given name, first name, purchaser, please enter your given first name. What I just realized is that Mary's introducing fields here. She wants the purchaser's first and last name, given in family names, as well as email. This is the purchaser's email here, but also the recipient. Now these fields were designed as a recipient fields, the who person receiving the order, because that could differ so I have to change the data model for this it's not as trivial as I thought and it looks like she's wanting to have more control over the form layout including adding form groups for purchaser and recipient information which is natural so let me just think here firstly if i look at the form the form is being generated by this crispy so in one line i'm, I'm actually generating all of these lines of so html it means i don't have explicit control over the markup so I have to figure that out. So two things I need to do. Change the model to have a little bit more information about the purchaser first and last name. So duplicating these fields basically. And to find out how to either override a crispy form layout or just how to manually write the Django form, which is okay too. So the reason we're using crispy is so that adds these boot strap classes, help text. I mean, it does everything here. Uh, simple is better than complex. I've used this uh, blog, Vitor Freya. Freitas, who lives in Helsinki, I think, still. A uh, really good resource. So let's take a look. So, yeah, they're more or less wanting to control and even putting some of these side by side. This is a nice addition. I think we could do this. Now, we're not using a basic, we're using a model form. I don't know how much this will differ. You can see the format. This table is pretty ugly. Here's where we are. Form crispy. It's a little prettier, but you don't have the nice uh, layout. So it looks like I can just wrap. Man, this is actually pretty nice. I can write the bootstrap classes here for layout. And let Crispy handle the field rendering. That's a good compromise. Again, the simplest better than complex blog is really excellent, really helpful. 
And I was hoping not to have to do something like this. I'm slowly warming up to having to, uh, you know, writing HTML in programming languages. But I still kind of prefer HTML as HTML. So let's take this middle way here. And I'll need a reference. So I've got to come back to the model so form. using black I think I'll use black for the uh, for linting so yeah again let's start at the model and now I realize that Mary wants family name email given name family name an email for the purchaser All right, so I just have to change these references. No. So yeah, I think these errors are coming because um, 
wagtail is trying to auto generate this form and I've just changed all the field names so it can't do that. I've had this problem in the past and you can see this form code here. Uh, wagtail will create that for me automatically. And then I have to also go here. edit these labels and probably help texts through here in just a moment. I just got to get this migration to work. Shortcuts again. Dang it. Poor views. So this could be in the. Oh, it doesn't look like it's been saved. Okay. So let's go to the view. Just a typo here. That's my keyboard shortcut for opening the terminal. This is actually the recipient family name. This is crazy. Uh, the, I'm just really impressed by the Django Orm. Uh, that was a really complicated migration, and uh, I think it's just going to handle that for me behind the scenes. I don't know, complicated is the right word, but yeah, just knowing that those fields named, we were renamed it, picked those up, and actually suggested the proper mapping. It's good stuff. I really like this. All right. Mm -hmm. 
Multi cursor, alt click, shift up and shift alt down, shift alt up. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Now, so we've got our migration. Looks like looking good. Looking good. Going to delete this now. Oh wait, I uh, don't need that because it's right there. Got it. So let's just see the layout we want here. So if I do want to put some of these in line, this is the place to do it. And form groups, bootstrap. So we want form groups. First thing. This is also something I was hoping to have uh, the opportunity to get to was more control over the form layout. I think I'm looking for the wrong word. What would be the word here? It's like a section header, like a form section header. So you got a row. margin on the bottom, what we'll put inside here.
put the email in its own row, essentially. Where does the indentation get messed up? Purchase your email. Let's just see what this looks like. Migrate the data. Run the server again. All right, let's see how this looks. Mm hmm, beautiful. Part of it is thrown off the columns. And it just doesn't look good. These are side by side, so this could give a name, family name. Well, just having this div here with Dividus, but this is strange that it's misaligned. But in any case, six. Let's see if this.
Everything's in order there. But this should just really be six. Purchasers section and recipient. And uh, this will be hard coded. Now the key is to get all these address fields back in here. Street address, PO box number, postal code, locality, region, country. So city, state, and zip could go in the same row. Migration. So you just PO box number, postal code. Those are going to go city, state, and postal code. This is cool. They're actually, this is good. I don't have to do a row for each of those. Just where I want them grouped into a single row. Uh, but in order to use this, column width, it has to be inside of a row. from schema.org, so we're just kind of building on that. In our model, I can set the default 
to United States. It's already there, so yeah, there we go. I can leave it out of this form, I believe. Oof. As in in existent field, non existent field. Which one? Recipient region, recipient locality, address locality. a little bit better. Okay, I'm making a little bit of progress. Um, not quite getting into the text, the field texts. We've got the migration created and the layout improved. This is going to be one big commit, uh, but in any case, let's do that. Uh, I would like to change this to a table also. Just to save a little bit of space. Now this one has row headers.
Uh, yeah, so it's just pretty standard. I don't know why IDEs can't just fix this kind of stuff. Oops. Shipping. It's a little cleaner. We'll aligns these. Usually over here. I'll leave it alone for now. I was just thinking if I put these in rows of this table and then had these totals in the right-hand column, uh, then this column header would be uh, incorrect. It would be like cost. Hmm. Talk to Mary about that if she'd like that improvement or if she would think it would be an improvement. All right, good. So let's commit this. This is a large commit. So since what we've done is uh, for the model, Being fields more or less. This could have been in the last command, but in any case. Hey, what's up, Shadow? Oh, oh. How to update memory offsets for CS? CS Counter Strike. <laughs> dude, I don't know how. I, I sorry, I don't play. Or I don't know if you're dude or not. But uh, memory offsets for Counter Strike. What does that mean? Is it like? Cheating, hacking. Yeah, I have no idea. Is Counter Strike open source? It's interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure, but it might be good. Uh, you could try on Stack Overflow. They usually have uh, some rapid responses there. Let's see if there's a Stack Overflow.
uh, rather computer science. <laughs> Yeah, I'll try over here actually, games. So this is Stack Exchange get Arcade and questions tagged. Counter-Strike, just go ahead and add that tag to yours and you'll probably find some people, I mean, this is a super active community, generally speaking. Uh, I don't know about the gaming subsection of it, but I've had really good results. The main stack overflow, whoops, oh, I don't see much there. Yeah, not sure, I would go I would go in that direction. I don't have any personal experience to be helpful. I'm focusing more on web development, although I am relatively interested in game development. Have you done any of your own game uh, development work? Shadow of Woe. Have you, have you heard the Godot, Godot engine? Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, if you're interested, it, it's um, there's a lot, it's pretty fun stuff, coding you can do quite a lot with. And uh, this is a really excellent um, game engine and development environment. And even you can develop games without doing too much coding. They have this visual script language. And even this GD script is very similar to Python. And we could use more open source games built with Godot to contribute to. All right, so committed the changes. One other place I need to look now that I've got these orders in the right order is under the Wagtail admin. Under the store, I believe, this Wagtail Hooks has the order model admin. And the order model has this inspect order template, which should be here, not too far away. So purchaser. change this layout okay, okay order create didn't return an HTTP response object good stuff so I must go back to the view orders Now this is strange because all I've really changed here, 
might be that. Uh, that I need a hidden field. With the United States. It's got to have that country in there. Hidden field. Oh, this is great. Yeah, let's bring out all them environment variables. So we've got to be careful there. Can only concatenate string, not none type to string. Oh, I think I know the problem here. So this is actually trying to initiate the brain tree. Brain tree order. Ranger, you are. Let me double check this. All right, so I do have the configuration variables in my environment, but it's not picking them up. My sandbox credentials, so if I leak them, then I guess it's not too bad, but I'd rather not. Ah. Mm. So that's actually my pip and shell, that's the problem. All right. So it's using, it's activating the virtual environment, but not using pipinv. Got it. No problem. Let's see if I have to go back now. Repair online. So this is all done for free by Braintree, just with like more or less one line of code. A couple lines of code, but in any case. Alrighty then, what am I doing? Going to. The admin area, admin section, if I go to the front and I log in. Damn it. So 
this is super secret password for my admin user. Check the store, go to the orders page. Ooh, email. Order model admin. Okay, so this is just now I've just got to change the mapping here. Store templates, bucktail hooks. Order model admin. Yeah, here we go. I believe the recipient you might want to search by recipient also. Now I need to inspect order template to check that out. It might be that we have to start uh, manually coding these. Instead of iterating over them, I can create the desired layout. Let's just take a look and see if this works. Uh, email on order. Okay, so yeah, that's. Yeah, the model orders. Yeah, that makes sense. So to change the string representation. I hope this, these fields weren't just kind of like whimsically added, so to speak, arbitrarily added. Because it, sometimes just when we just kind of add this type of things to a software development project, it has all these knock on effects. Like just to add these few fields, I'm having to touch all these other files, it's threaded throughout the system. So it's important that we, I guess, get this out of the way early, but nonetheless. If they're not really needed, if it's not really important that we capture this purchaser first and last name, it's recipient first and last name was sufficient, but in any case, full name on order model admin. So there we go. Now we'll just go back to this order model admin and the fields is displaying purchaser and recipient. That's the way it is, trying to be consistent and get it in there. 
Here we go. Purchase our full name, recipient full name, paid. Not too bad. In Wagtail, let's make this stuff pretty easy. I'm just thinking aloud. Okay, at this point, it's been almost an hour and a half. Not quite. Hey, beard guy, cooks. Thanks for the raid. It's really nice. I appreciate it. What's up, Lorfusel? Lorfusel. Ah, beard guy. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. What uh, uh, what type of development do you do, Beard Guy? What's what's your channel about? I haven't I haven't seen it before. I'll make sure to subscribe. How do I do that? Beard Guy cooks. Okay, very cool. All right, looks like you're studying. Got some study streams going on, very nice. Mainly about studying and working and making streams so that others can also join and study and work together. But then on Fridays and Saturdays, I'm planning to cook. It's one of my hobbies. Hey, that's really cool, a cooking stream. I'm learning to cook a little bit in my <laughs> spare time, I'm usually pretty Lazy cook, just get something. Hopefully, has some good nutrition, protein. Um, for this uh, study and coding, this Code Buddies community is really excellent, uh, pretty active, and I highly recommend it. Uh, and it's all oriented around streaming and collaborating uh, and hanging out together. So maybe it would be a good uh, connection for your feed as well, for your community. All right, so here we are. Um, I've got this. Uh, also, it's uh, open source. Do you have any, what are you uh, kind of studying for? Like what's your um, kind of direction in life, beard guy? What are you gonna be going into? What field? Is it like development or GMAT? Uh, oh, do you have any like, amb what are your ambitions? Oh, yeah, business school, uh, cool. Oh, nice, yeah, we, I do some analytics at work with uh, mainly with Python and uh, some data visualization. It's really fun stuff. Yeah, I started with R as well. It's a good language. And Julia's one to kind of keep an eye on as well. I think it's up and coming. Let's see, discard changes to that. I don't need a swap file. What did we change here? Let's just commit these while I'm here. I have recipient and purchase full name. Hey, thanks for the follow, beard guy. I appreciate it. I hope to see you around. Cool. So, uh, yeah, but I think this has been a pretty good session, pretty productive overall. Uh, didn't get to any of these open issues, but I uh, was able to uh, dig into the form layout and tie it all the way to the back end. So, the form layout also implied a couple of other fields. Sometimes, when uh, I think the end users are designing, uh, just so to speak, the Mary Klein is the end user here, she's the editor, and she's kind of intuitively uh, designing the form for the information she needs to capture and wouldn't have an awareness of the uh, wiring that goes underneath it. And so I don't uh, have any um, qualms about that. And I believe that it's very important that now, in hindsight, I, th I recognize the importance of having both the purchaser and the recipient, particularly for cases where they're different, where you're ordering something on uh, as a gift on behalf of somebody else. So now we have that exposed in the user interface and thankfully Wagtail gives us really nice, uh, I can say, hey, give me the recipient 
so this will show me the uh, let's see where the this string is in any of these fields really well sort of behind the scenes let's see clear them show me ones that are and these are paid because i went through that transaction show me ones that are not paid this all comes from wagtail it's a really great uh, framework if you're interested in developing a content oriented website uh, Django is a very good foundation and Wagtail adds a very nice user experience. I think it's largely inspired by WordPress. Very cool. Well, the viewership has peaked just around the time that uh, I'm trying to wrap up this stream. Again, this is a kind of a Code Buddies hangout. We're working on this e commerce website with Django and Wagtail CMS. This has been under development for, oh, I think over six months. We should be in the home stretch. Uh, in the f future, in the near future, I'm going to finish up some of these little um, more nuanced, just like small, uh, low hanging fruit tasks with user facing texts and things. And we're going to work on a subscription model. This is a, essentially, Western Friend magazine is a nonprofit organization in the Western United States, and their main um, means of Revenue is through subscriptions. This uh, magazine has been published uh, under a couple different names back to 1926, I believe it is. Uh, it's every two months a new issue comes out, and only the latest three issues are subscriber only. Everything else goes into the archive, which anybody can access. And again, this goes back to the deep archive where it was called Friends Bulletin, 1929. All of those issues are available online, in particular through the uh, excellent work of the Internet Archive, uh, including they scanned it, they digitized all of these and host them for free and give us this nice interface to browse it. So we're just porting this website over from Drupal to Wagtail CMS, trying to preserve most of the functionality. Um, so in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be uh, probably starting this week, in fact, uh, once I get through just a couple more of these um, low-hanging fruit issues. I'll be working on the subscriber model, which will control access to the latest three issues and then allowing public access to the remainder. So thanks to everybody who's joined the chat. Thanks to Beard Guy Cooks for the raid. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's nice to have people hanging out. I uh, hope to see you around on Twitch if you're viewing this on YouTube. Um, I'll try to respond quickly to any questions or comments that you add below the video. And also be sure to check out this Code Buddies community. We're really active on several channels, um, community channels. The platform is open source and there's a lot of different groups for various topics if you're interested in, in studying Java, JavaScript, C++, Python, Django, test driven design, you name it, computer science, artificial intelligence, CSS, AWS, there's all sorts of ways to get connected and learn and teach. Okay, well, thanks again for watching and have a great day.